Alright guys, I'm back with my WWE Raw review for the uh, 4th of the 4th, 2016. And this last episode of Raw was an awesome show. I would have to say that this last episode of Raw was a fun show to watch. And I haven't said that much this year or much the last couple of years about Raws. Now I know normally the Raw after WrestleMania is normally super good. But this WrestleMania was just, uh, this post WrestleMania. Raw was like good to me. I, I I just thought it was so good. I didn't think it was like good as 2013's um, Raw after WrestleMania because that Raw in 2013 after WrestleMania was awesome. But this was an awesome crowd to, uh, last night. They got into everything. Like you know, they got into uh, just chanting everything. They were booing the faces, cheering the fucking heels. You know, normal shit like that. And it was all good. But before I get into Raw, I want to talk about WrestleMania. And probably you are, you guys saying, um, Hey Calum, why have you not reviewed WrestleMania 32 yet? Um, I know that you weren't going to watch it. Uh, the thing is, I did see bits of WrestleMania um, because I was busy on Sunday and shit. But I didn't. I saw little bits of WrestleMania. So I'm just um, telling you guys, my, I'm giving you my thoughts on the bits that I saw at WrestleMania. I saw Mick Foley, Shawn Michaels, and Stone Cold. I, that was a good moment. Um, when they all came out, the, the three of them drinking the beers and that, awesome. Um, Roman Reigns retaining, Roman Reigns winning the title. Um, it was predictable, so I didn't care about it too much. Shame that my favorite moment from WrestleMania was also the beer with with um, HBK and Shawn Michaels and Mick Foley and Stone Cold. Why did I just say Shawn Michaels and Mick Foley? Oh. With HBK and Mick Foley and Stone Cold. That was one of my favorite moments of WrestleMania. And also with um, uh, when Shane, um, actually, he was on top of the Hell in a Cell, and Shane uh, climbs up top of Hell, of Hell in a Cell and um, gives an elbow drop on the Undertaker. I knew that Shane was going to do something at that WrestleMania. But then it was a nice thing. It's a nice thing because like Shane's not like a wrestler, he's kind of just like a normal, normal guy, and he can like wrestle better than probably. The, the active wrestler can these days, like him taking big bumps. You don't normally see that with the um, current roster right now in WWE. Like him taking big bumps off the hell in the cell. You don't see that normally in today's WWE. But that, that was really good. Um, and then the debut of the women's title. Finally, the WWE are listening and finally got rid of the Divas title. Thank God for that. It's just called a women's title now. Um, it was confirmed a few days ago that Stephanie says that she apparently has said that. The Divas title, or even Divas reference, has been absolutely retired. It's just women now. It's just women's wrestling and women's titles, and that's all. That's it. And um, what else happened at WrestleMania? Oh yeah, The Rock came out. They had a cool entrance, and then John Cena came out, and they beat up the Wyatts. Hmm. Whatever. I, I I mean, it, yeah, you know, it was typical. I don't know, typical WWE like to bring out The Rock and John Cena. It's like whatever. But yeah, um, that was WrestleMania. Overall, the bits I saw of WrestleMania and AJ Styles losing was a bad thing, but yeah. Um, overall, I thought WrestleMania wasn't a bad show. Uh, even, I know a lot of me and a lot of you guys said that all oh, WrestleMania is going to suck this year, and I thought it was going to do. You know, it did for some bits, like I didn't like how AJ Styles lost to WrestleMania. Like he's his first WrestleMania, they did, they did the same thing with Sting last year. When Triple H faced Sting last year, Sting lost his first WrestleMania. It doesn't make sense. If you're bringing a fresh um, guy into the company that's never wrestled in your company before, aren't you, put, uh, aren't you supposed to put over the guy that's never worked at that company instead of a guy that's worked there like 17 years? doesn't make no damn sense. But anyway, uh, I'm not going to talk about WrestleMania now. That's just a few things I just want to talk about WrestleMania. So yeah, there's my thoughts on WrestleMania, guys, if you guys were wondering, or for you guys who have been asking me about my WrestleMania review, I'm not doing one because I didn't get to watch all WrestleMania, so I just watched the bits I saw, and I'm going to talk, that's what I did, just talk about them, basically. Uh, so yeah, uh, Raw this week, it was really awesome, the show was actually really awesome this week, I was actually excited to watch a 3 hour, I was actually, I actually watched a 3 hour episode of Monday Night Raw, and actually didn't feel bored at all watching Raw. I just kept fast forwarding, like, like I kept like, fast forwarding it and stuff, and like, like, oh my god, I can't watch, I cannot wait for the next moment, man. Like, I was so excited for Raw this week. I don't know what it was, maybe because it was after WrestleMania, and I just get excited for the Raw after WrestleMania. But 
I was excited, man, and that was real good. So the the show opens up with Vince McMahon coming out, and Vince says basically that he, um, he's not happy that obviously there's some ups and downs at WrestleMania. The down is he, he's a bit down because Triple H is injured, and basically Roman is his new WWE World Champion. The fans boo, and I just laugh at this point because. Like WWE changing Roman Reigns as like the second John Cena and the fans are like fuck you Roman Reigns fuck you WWE this is our top guy our top guy's like Dean Ambrose or something like that and then um and then Vince says I did have a happy moment at WrestleMania when um when Undertaker beat my son Shane and stuff like that but and then he puts over Shane and stuff for him fucking clap him um he puts over Shane for um almost killing himself uh, on top of the cell. And then Shane comes out. He says that uh, he says he's sorry to the fans. He says I'm sorry for letting you guys down. He says he's goodbyes and stuff. And, sh and then the fans chant, "You still got it." And you know, it was like that all night with most of the wrestlers anyway. And then Vince says, "Wait a minute, wait a minute." It's always a crazy crowd after WrestleMania, but I'm gonna make an exception, Shane. Uh, temp I'm gonna make you temporary. Ch uh, you can you you can have a temporary charge of Monday Night Raw. So basically. Why did the hell? Why? This is what I don't get with the WWE. When the WWE put a stipulation on a match for a WrestleMania, like Shane, if Shane won the match, then he was gonna become, you know, like the, or like he was gonna control Raw, and then you had Undertaker maybe retiring, like you know, retiring, and that was gonna be his last WrestleMania. Why the hell would you have a stipulation like that when a day later after WrestleMania? Shane loses the match, and then Vince goes, Okay, have control Monday Night Raw, Shane. What the fuck is... There's no logic in between that. I've said that before. They've done done things like this before, and I've said that before. Like, WWE, when you think of a stipulation, actually stick to the storyline. Like, if the guy has lost a match and cannot get a title shot again, please do not give him a title shot a year later. That happened with TNA, I remember a couple years ago, it was Christopher Daniels and AJ Styles having a feud, and AJ wasn't supposed to win, if uh, Christopher Daniels beat AJ Styles one last time, then that meant that AJ wouldn't be able to get a title shot for a year in TNA. So basically AJ Styles went for a few months without a title shot, and then I think in 2013 he got a title shot at Bound for Glory against Bully Ray. So what the fuck was the logic behind that? I don't know, but that's TNA booking anyway. But I don't know. Like a lot of wrestling promotions these days don't actually stick to the stipulations that they put out for the storylines. They just put like out any stipulation and let us fans think they forgot it, and we didn't forget, man. I mean, you drilled that into us for like three or four weeks without Shane. If Shane won the match, and you know he could have control of Raw, but if Taker lost, then that that could be his last WrestleMania, which Taker didn't lose. He actually won the match. Um. But yeah, I wish WWE would actually make it like, you know, the stick pushes mean something instead of just like nothing, you know. Um, and then the first match of the night, which was a, for the WWE Tag Team titles, it was New Day defending against the Leeds of Nation, Sheamus and Barra. Um, it was a decent match, you know, it was a back, good back and forth match, New Day over now. And um, Xavier Woods now has got like a cereal on top of his unicorn now, like a big massive all for cereal. So uh, yeah, he's got like a cereal. Um, on like a round cereal on his um, unicorn now. Um, so yeah, New Day win with the big ending after the match. Shane says, "Well, I grew stronger when you eliminate your weakest member." And then the, uh, Sheamus eliminates um, Way Barrett. He bro kicks him. And I think they're doing this because um, a few months ago, I heard that um, Way Barrett wants to leave WWE. Apparently, um, well, to be honest with you, the way that they the way that they booked him since um, Nexus ended, I don't actually blame the guy. Most of, I mean, you look at WWE's mid cards right now, and you just look at some of them that they've pushed in the past. Dolph Ziggler, I wouldn't blame him if he quit tomorrow, because the way that he's been mishandled and misbooked and absolutely buried over the last couple of years, I wouldn't be surprised if he went to TNA. Like. Dolph Ziggler, and I said this before in my video about Dolph, he should go to TNA because I think if he was in TNA he would get used way much better and he would get pushed a lot better. I mean look at DC3, another guy that he got rid of who had great potential in WWE as his name was Eric Bateman, Eric Bateman and Derek Bateman, 
And then Ishii and then Tini signed him as Ishii 3, he became an awesome heel and then became the world champion and look at him now, he's a he's super over as a big face in TNA. Um, you look at other talents like Mr. Anderson um, that they failed to push, um, MVP, um, who else? I think I mean Drew Drew McIntyre or Drew Galloway's as he is now. Um Dark Gallows, Cole Cabana, Cian Punk. They pushed him but you know, he was always not featured in the spots he should have been spe featured in basically. Um but he was pushed but not pushed as like he should have been, like he should have been one of the top three guys of the company and he wasn't. Like one of the top two guys in the company, and they really never pushed him as one of the two guy, top two guys. You know, it was always seen or not in real game pushed as the top two babe, babe faces or heels of the company. It was never to see on Fong, which was kind of a shame. Um, Daniel Bryan, well, they did push Daniel Bryan, didn't they? So I couldn't see Daniel Bryan. But yeah, a lot of other guys like Zack Ryder, and I could go on the list of mid carders and main eventers that the WWE screwed to push over the years and go all the way. Then my God, I'll be here all day. And the Miz and all these other guys that have good talents, John Morrison. Just a lot of them have good talents, but WWE just don't want to use the guys that they want to use them for a few months, and then they fucking release them or something like that. They push them on one big main event storyline, and then they shovel down back to the main card. And that's my kind of a thing about NXT. Like, like you have these good wrestlers, but basically, um, you know. They get buried and you know they get fed to the mid card every time. And I mean, look at the Paul Cruz. He debuted on this last episode of Raw. He's a good athletic guy. I mean, he's a athletic guy for you know. He's a good ring worker. He's athletic in the ring, and I don't know about his mind skills yet because I've not really watched much of NXT. But what I've seen from the video package show on Raw, he is going to be a good talent. But I hope he's not like Titus O'Neil. I hope he's not like. A Tass O'Neill character or a Darren Young character that like, just stays in the mid card and tears the image. I hope they finally, you know, push this guy to a main event scene. Because this guy, looking at his video package from the last of Raw, has potential to be a big star. But yeah, I just went on a big rant about the mid card as well. And, and, yeah. Anyway, the second match of that was, which was Summer Rae versus Sasha Banks. Um, Sasha Banks just squashes Summer Rae and she wins with the. Um, Bank statement. Then the third match tonight, which was Apollo Cruz's debut versus Tiger Breeze. Apollo Cruz wins with a moonsault. Very good debut, and I hope, you know, like I said, Apollo Cruz goes far to WWE. Um, and then we get a segment from Reigns. Reigns says that last night he beat Triple H at WrestleMania. He's not a good guy. He's not a bad guy. It was a typical shit Roman Reigns promo. The fans were eating him alive, absolutely killing him in this promo. I was actually finding it so full. I was laughing, like watching Roman Reigns cut this promo. And then Jericho comes out, and Jericho's like, It rains, I'm telling you, I'm not just telling you, I'm demanding a title shot at whatever, whenever time he wants to start with at, at Extreme Rules. And then um, Jericho says, I'm not getting trolled by these fans. And then, like, you know, the fans go nuts and stuff. And then KO comes out, and then Sami Zayn comes out, and AJ Styles comes out. AJ and Jericho brawl, and Sami Zayn and Owens brawl. Then Reigns spears Jericho, and that was the end of the segment, really. And then um, Shane tells Reigns that tonight's the normal contender match is going to feel four way between Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, Jericho, and AJ Styles, and the winner of that will face obviously Roman Reigns. And then it, the fourth match tonight, which is Baron Corbin versus Dolph Ziggler. Um, Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler counting out because they were brawling outside the crowd and stuff and the ref counting them out but like I said Baron Corbin um, I'm not the biggest Baron Corbin fan um, I think that the guy has potential to be a good you know to be a decent big guy in the WWE but my downfall is that his mic skills are just not there like he can be a good character I think if he has a manager if you know what I mean but I mean, this guy has potential. I mean, he won the Andre Memorial Battle Royal, so I just hope that you know WWE really push him. Um, and then we get to the fifth match, right, which was for the IC title. It was Miz versus Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder defends his IC title. Now, before the match, Zack Ryder was talking about how last night Razor Ramon congratulated him for winning his first IC title, and then he shows a picture of him and Razor celebrating Zack Ryder's win, and then shows a picture of Zack Ryder holding Razor's title at WrestleMania 10. 
Um, and then Miz comes out, Miz challenges Ryder to a title match tonight, Ryder accepts. Um, Ryder gets distracted by Maurice, Maurice apparently is working with WWE again, um, I heard, so good for Maurice. Uh, she's a good women wrestler, so she's a good woman wrestler. Um, Miz wins by a figure four, it looks like a Miz and Zack Ryder feud for the NC title next. Uh, then we get to a segment, uh, Renee interviews Kevin Owens, and Kevin Owens says we're gonna destroy, he says he's gonna destroy Roman, uh, the Roman Reigns Empire and he's gonna, he's, he's got more better things to do than fight for the Intercontinental. And then um, after that, Lita comes out and Lita talks about how uh, women's wrestling is awesome and stuff like that, you know, typical kind of Hall of Fame promo. Um, Natalia comes out and then she puts um, sh Natalia. Well, all, basically, all the rest, all the divas are in the ring. Well, sorry, women wrestlers are in the ring, and obviously because it's a new belt and stuff. And it actually, I don't know about the new belt. It looks kind of more like the WWE title. But um, so they're all out there, and Charlotte's, you know, kind of promo. I don't know. Uh, she's got a promo, and basically the de rest of the divas walk out. I fast forward this part because I'm, I don't know. I'm just bored of the divas. Um, and then Natalia's like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna put you in a sharpshooter." And that was about it. So that's probably gonna be uh, Charlotte's next feud for the women's title. Uh, Charlotte versus Natalia. It's gonna be a good feud, I hope, and I hope it actually has some good build up, and I hope. That they have a good match. I know they had a good match at NXT not last year, the year before, which was really good. Um, and then the sixth match tonight was for it was a tables match. It was the Usos versus the Dudleys. The Dudleys win, whatever. And then Enzo Amore, Enzo Amore, and Big Cas debut. Um, they, I mean, when they came out, they were so super over with the crowd. And this is a tag team. What I I think that WWE are gonna like rocket ship to you know to the top of the tag team division because these guys are good on the mic. Well, Colin or well, Kaz is not Kaz. El, I mean Enzo Amore is a good mic worker man. Like he's a good mic worker. I that's what I think anyway. Um, they're over the crowd and I like their gimmick. You know, um, which is a good gimmick. Uh, and it looks like they're gonna feud with the Dudleys anyway next. And um, probably the dollies are going to put them over, which is good anyway. <coughs> and then um, KO puts uh, Sami Zayn through a table. The and, then the and then it's the main event. So it's basically the fail falling match for the for Roman Reigns' title. So it's uh, Cesar oh, no, so it's Kevin Owens versus Jericho versus AJ Styles and versus the mist versus the mystery fourth member and that is Cesaro. Cesaro returns gets an awesome pop from the crowd and basically they have a, probably one of the best matches of the night a lot of back and forth here um, and a good few spots as well at the end of the match uh, Jericho's got um, Cesaro in the walls no not Cesaro's got Jericho in the uh, shot shooter uh, um, AJ breaks that up and then it's down to Jericho and Styles and Jericho uh, tries to go for Cole Rick but AJ puts him into the Styles Clash and w pins him and wins the match and AJ Styles is using the scout, uh, Style Clash actually again and I thought that move was actually a ban but I guess WWE just wanted to use it so which is cool anyway so yeah AJ Styles is the new known contender for the WWE World Championship and I, ho I, I hope it's a good feud between Roman Reigns and um, AJ Styles I probably think that AJ Styles is probably going to lose the match and probably put over on Reigns it's kind of sad though but it looks like to me WWE don't want to drop the belt to Reigns just yet. Like they probably are going to drop the they are going to drop the belt. Roman Reigns is going to drop the belt, but he's not going to drop it this early. Yeah, it's going to have a good few months, and then he's probably going to drop to Dean Ambrose or AJ Styles or something like that. And uh, yeah, so that's it, guys, for my WWE review for the uh, for the fourth 2016. What do you guys think of this last episode of Raw? And uh, leave a comment if that's watching, guys. Break out.